Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to my Bash scripting series. In this video, what we're going to do is take a look at case statements. And this is going to be a lot of fun, so I'm going to just dive right into this and teach you all about case statements, so let's get started. We can use a case statement to actually create a sort of menu and have the user choose something from that menu. Let's see a quick example, and then I'll explain it. So what I'll do is I'll create a fresh script. And then of course I will mark it executable. And let's go ahead and open it up. Just like before, we will start off with a shebang up here at the top. And what I'm going to do right now is just go ahead and write the entire script. And then when I'm done, I'll explain exactly what it's doing. All right, so I finished typing up the script and let's go through it. So right here, I have the first of several echo statements and this one is asking the user a question. What is your favorite Linux distribution? Moving on, I have another echo statement right here that gives the user the option of one and telling them that that represents the choice of Arch. Same here for option two, CentOS, Debian, Mint, Ubuntu, and so on. Now with these echo statements, there's actually nothing unique about these at all. These are every bit the same as the other echo statements you've seen earlier in this series. All I'm doing here is I'm using these echo statements to give the user a call to action. Now here, we're actually going to be using standard input. And standard input, output, and error, those are all things that I've gone over earlier in a previous lesson. But what read is doing in this case is it's actually reading input from the user, and whatever the user enters in, it's going to save that into the distro variable. Moving on, we have our case statement. And so far in this script, this is the only thing that we haven't already seen before. This is the first time that we've ever written a case statement in the series. Now, a case statement actually allows us to do a particular thing depending on what a variable equals. So first of all, I declared the case statement by typing out the case keyword. And then we give it a variable that we want to use. In this case, I want to use the distro variable that we created right here. So as the user enters in data, that variable will be declared and it will contain whatever they type. And then here, we're using that variable. And what we want to do is find out which of these cases matches what the user typed in. And how the case statement is actually going to play out is it's first going to check and see if distro is equal to one. And if it is, that would imply that the user entered number one and pressed enter. If they did, then, well, this choice right here is the one that they went along with. Since distro equals one in this hypothetical case, it's going to print this statement right here, and then it's going to go all the way down here where I have the word case backwards, and that lets Bash know that the case statement is over. Now, if the user didn't enter one, then what the case statement is going to do is compare the next option. Let's assume that the user entered five, that Ubuntu is their favorite distribution. When the case statement goes to compare the distro variable with two, well, it's not going to be a match, so it's not going to echo this statement right here. Same for three, and same for four, those are not matches. But if the user actually entered five, then when the case statement gets down here to option five, that's going to be a match. Therefore, it's going to echo this statement right here. If the user entered six, well, then their favorite distribution is something that's not on this list. So then we just print a very simple statement. Now, notice here we have an asterisk. And the way this works out is that when the script is running, and then the case statement is compared from values one through six, or however many you create, then it's only going to get down here to the asterisk if none of these other options were a match. In our case, that can only mean that the user has entered something else other than what was a valid selection. Maybe they entered seven, they entered nine, they entered ABC one, two, three, they entered something in here 
that absolutely doesn't match anything that was before this. So this is kind of like a catch-all, if you will. It's going to execute this particular echo statement only if the case statement was never a match based on what the user entered in. Now, after each case statement, notice here that every single one of them ends with semicolons. If you forget these semicolons, the case statement will not work. The end of every case needs to end with two semicolons. Now, you can put the semicolons on a different line if you wish. For example, if you have, I don't know, multiple commands, you can absolutely do that. But if you only have one command, well, then it's fairly common to include the semicolons at the end of that statement. And as you can see, each of these statements, they all end in semicolons, with the exception being the last option, and that is not a typo. That was intentional. The last option doesn't need the semicolons like the previous options do. So let's go ahead and run the script and we'll see whether or not it works. Hopefully I didn't make any typos. So let's minimize this. And we'll go ahead and execute the script. So at this point, every echo statement at the top of the script, they've all run. Each one of these lines that you see was its own echo statement. And again, there's nothing special about these echo statements. Even the numbers that are to the left of each of these items, I just type that in. It has no actual meaning whatsoever. The only part that has value is what the user enters in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter 5 right here. And if this works, it should actually give me an appropriate message or whatever message matches option 5 in the case statement. Because as soon as I press enter, the case statement is going to compare the distro variable with what I've entered. And if it finds a match, it's going to execute whatever command I had on that line. Anyway, I'll press enter to confirm option 5. Let's see what happens. And it tells me Ubuntu is popular on both servers and computers. And that is the message that I typed for option number 5. So the case statement worked. Let's go ahead and run it again. This time I'm going to choose option number 1. And of course I get a message about Arch Linux, which is expected. But let's go ahead and do something that was unexpected. Again, we have our choices right here, and I am going to choose option number 8. But there is no option number 8. That doesn't exist. Now, if the script works properly, it should actually catch this error and be prepared for the user to enter in something else other than what was shown above. So I'll press Enter. And naturally, it's telling me that I didn't enter an appropriate choice. So as you can see here, our case statement is working perfectly fine. All right, so now let's go ahead and see another example of using a case statement. But this time, in this next example, I'm going to combine something that we've learned before that I think is going to make this script even cooler, or at least it's going to give you an example of how some of these different features within Bash actually work together. So I'll recall the script. And what I'm going to do is edit the script and add another feature to it. And then I'll be right back and I'll explain exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm done updating the script, and what I'll do is explain exactly what I've done. So first of all, I added a variable right here. I named it finished, and I set it equal to zero. Now the majority of the script is exactly the same. I added another option, but what I've done is I've actually moved the entirety of the script that we had originally into a while loop. And the requirement for this while loop to continue running is that the finished variable cannot be equal to one. If ever the finished variable actually gets to the point where it does equal 1, then this statement right here is no longer true and the while loop will end. But since I'm actually declaring the variable as 0, like you see right here, this requirement is actually met. Finished is not equal to 1 at this point. And then it's going to go ahead and echo everything that you see here. Just like before, it's going to read a distro variable. But I've also added option number 7 right here to exit the script. That wasn't there before. Continuing, most of this was actually there before. We have the same case statement right here. It's just going to go ahead and echo a statement depending on what the user entered in. But I actually created a case for option 7. And if the user was to enter 7 and press enter, then the case statement is going to catch that and set the finished variable to 1 which means that the requirements for the while loop to continue running are no longer met, and that's going to cause this entire while loop to break out. So once that happens, 
it's going to echo, thank you for using this script. Let's go ahead and see it in action. So I'll simply run it. And just like before, it's asking me what my favorite Linux distribution is. This time to keep it fun, I'm going to select Debian. And we can see the response right here. Debian is a community distribution. But then the entire process repeats itself. It's asking me again what my favorite Linux distribution is. Well, I already told it. So if I wanted to, I could simply press seven to exit the script, but I can have some fun and just choose another option. You know, it's always good to test out the script and make sure that it's working exactly as we think it is. So I'll also choose an invalid response as well. And of course, it's going to tell me that I didn't enter an appropriate choice, which is exactly what I would expect it to say. And I could just choose distributions and see the messages all day long. And this script is going to run forever and ever and ever. But once I'm finished, what I should be able to do is enter option seven to exit the script. If this works, the script should actually print the last message and then exit, which is exactly what it did. So to walk through this one more time, just to make sure that everyone understands this, we create a variable named finished. Next, we set up a while loop and this while loop actually requires the finished variable to not equal one, which of course it doesn't. And while that makes sense because the finished variable was declared as zero, so when the script starts out, then this statement is actually true. Finished is not equal to one. But if finished is not equal to one, what do we want to do about that? Well, we want it to do something. We want it to print each of these lines right here. This is going to present a menu to the user. And again, these are simple echo statements. There's nothing special about these whatsoever. Here we have read distro. And distro is a variable that I'm creating right here. It was not declared earlier in the script, as you can see. I'm reading information from the user and whatever they enter is going to be stored in the distro variable. Continuing, we have the actual case statement right here, which is going to compare whatever is inside the distro variable, whatever the user entered in, and it's going to see if there's a match here. If the user typed one, then what's going to happen is this echo statement will print and then the case statement will end. If the user enters in two, then it's going to go ahead and execute this all the way down to option seven. And option seven is going to set the finished variable to be equal to one. Therefore, when the script returns back up here to the top, then this statement here is no longer true at that point if it's equal to one. And then this while loop, the while loop that the case statement is inside of, it will then end. And once it breaks out of the actual while loop at the top, then it's going to execute this statement right here because this statement isn't inside of an if statement. It's not inside of a case statement. It's just by itself. So once this is done, it's going to move on to this last line right here and print the message that you see inside the script. Now, of course, this particular script is not very useful, but if you think about it and use your creative mindset, you can actually create a menu-driven interface to actually manage a server. This might be useful for a beginner. Maybe they didn't master all the commands yet in which case a menu-driven script, such as this one, might actually be useful to them. And of course, we have echo statements here, but you don't have to have an echo statement as what happens when a user selects an option. Again, you can make it update packages, reboot the server, perform a data processing task, you name it. And we see an example of that right here. For option seven, I'm not actually echoing anything, although I could, to be fair, I could actually have this echo statement to be part of number seven, and then number seven could set the finished variable to be equal to one after this prints, which would actually save us a line of code. But anyway, you see an example here that is not an echo statement. And of course we have our catch all down here, the asterisk, which means anything else. If nothing matched so far, then the user did not choose something that we were expecting, and we need to let them know that they didn't enter an appropriate choice. And then after the case statement is over, it breaks out of that and it breaks out of the while loop. And then we're down here to the echo statement, which then prints and then the script exits out. So anyway, now you know how to create a case statement and go ahead and play around with this. I think this is something that's extremely fun. And the only limit is your imagination. Even though we're not up to the end of the series yet, at this point, you should have enough knowledge within your tool set to actually start creating scripts that add value.
So thanks yet again for checking out this video. I really appreciate it. The next video is of course already uploaded because I uploaded all of these episodes all at the same time, but don't rush through the series. Take your time and make sure that you're learning each of the concepts that we go over. And by the end of the series, you're going to be surprised just how much you've learned about bash scripting. Anyway, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video as soon as you're ready.